So like a lot of you, I've been thinking about the Old Scrolls 6. Where it'll be set, what it'll be like, which companion I'll hate, the usual. And by the usual, I mean I have an embarrassingly long document I've been adding stuff to for years talking about every aspect of the game, even creating custom skill trees and battle systems. Now I did this before I even considered having a YouTube channel. All this to say, I'm really, really cool. Anyway, the resulting mess of ideas has enough potential to fuel a lot of videos. So this is the start of a series of videos on my ideal Elder Scrolls game. I'll work on this whenever I run enough ideas for other videos. I'd be grateful for any feedback or criticism you have to offer on this, so feel free to rate and comment. On that note, let's begin. To some of you, this will sound really familiar. This is because this is a remake of my last two videos. I've had a change of heart on some of the design decisions and it's been long enough since the last video that I figured we may as well restart. As I said previously, the earlier parts of this series will focus purely on game design, just the big idea, more generalized direction I would take the next game in. And I'm not gonna try to make Elder Scrolls into something it isn't. I want my Elder Scrolls 6 to feel like it could be made by Bethesda. I do want a game that builds on previous titles, but I'll do so while also adhering to the flexibility and accessibility that make Bethesda's games appealing for so many people. And the first stop in this video series is... Skills and Perks. Let's start with skills. Skills in Elder Scrolls work differently than other games. In other RPGs, you usually gain XP by doing various tasks, either killing or questing, and then once you get enough XP to level up, you then invest points into certain skills. Sometimes this takes the form of just putting points into a skill, other times it's choosing a perk, sometimes it's both. You get the idea, it varies from game to game. In other RPGs, you get experience points to level up your skills. In Elder Scrolls, you get experience points by leveling up your skills, and you level up your skills by using them. Every time you use a skill, you get a small amount of XP toward that particular skill's level. So in Skyrim, every time you slash a sword, you get more XP toward your one-handed skill. Get enough XP, and you level up the one-handed skill, making it more powerful. This boost of power happens outside of an overall leveling screen, meaning after you use your skills enough to boost them, you make them more powerful right there on the spot immediately. The Elder Scrolls leveling system is pretty unique compared to most RPGs. In other RPGs, what you do during the level doesn't really impact what you actually level up when you get to the level up screen. Elder Scrolls, on the other hand, is closer to a simulation of our world, where practice makes perfect. The game isn't entirely realistic, but it's sort of pseudo-realistic where things are arranged in a way that makes sense based on common sense and more general game knowledge. It makes a certain amount of sense that you get better with the sword by actually using the sword. This makes the game both more intuitive, more immersive, and gives it a really unique sense of progression. It's a core part of the franchise. But it's not perfect, and the core problem isn't how the skills work, but the skills themselves. Now, for our comparison, we're going to rely on Morrowind and Skyrim. For the most egregious examples of the problems with their skill systems, let's look at the melee skills specifically. Morrowind had short blade, long blade, blunt, axe, spear, and hand-to-hand -hand as their own skills. Skyrim replaced all weapon skills with two skills, one-handed and two-handed. Each game has its own shortcomings. In Morrowind, everything was its own skill. This allowed the game to recognize the specific skills you used. RPGs, and specifically the character builds in RPGs, are about navigating the world with a particular set of skills, which is just as much about the skills you don't level up as the ones that you do. This is what makes your character feel unique, the sense that you could do something that someone else couldn't. This feeling is a big part of the power fantasy of these games, and facilitating this feeling requires permanency and consequence to your choices. Having more individual skills skills makes this feeling stronger. The short sword assassin increases a set of skills different from the mace wielding barbarian. When you choose to play as the assassin type character, you're making a choice to level certain skills and ignore others. It gives a sense of ownership to your playthrough and forces you to see the world in a different way than another build would have to. However, if you don't want to stick with your build, you're kind of screwed. If you want to switch from swords to maces and Morrowind, you'd basically start from square one, which can be tedious. Meanwhile, if you want to do the same thing in Skyrim, you can because both are under the same skill, one-handed. So Skyrim's system allows for far more flexibility and freedom. 
However, Skyrim gets that freedom by generalizing everything. As we just got done saying, part of the appeal of RPGs is navigating the world and the challenges with a particular set of skills, and Skyrim's leveling system is too generalized to really allow that. The lack of skills in Skyrim means that players who do stick with a particular play style aren't really rewarded or recognized for their efforts. The short sword assassin and the heavy plated mace user both gain their damage from the same skill, one handed. This removes a lot of character from your builds and makes multiple playthroughs feel really, really samey. Since you can swap between the short sword assassin and the mace wielding barbarian at the drop of a hat, your choices are less meaningful. When I was playing Skyrim, every time I was sneaking around as my short sword assassin, I think to myself, honestly, I could just run in face first and fight with a mace and be almost as efficient. Yes, even if you include the perks. Your playstyle choices don't change how you approach the game. You don't have to approach the game differently playing one build or another. The majority of my quote unquote build, all it is is a representation of my playstyle in that moment. Even if you stick with the playstyle, the game isn't really recognizing it aside from a handful of perks. And at that point, your build is basically headcanon. And this takes away from the legitimacy of your build to a lot of players, myself included. Having a lot of individual skills forces players to pick a build. And that can often make each achievement or progress you make feel that much more real, that much more earned, since sticking to your build was a struggle you couldn't avoid. Now, this does run the risk of a player haphazardly increasing in a whole bunch of skills and being really mediocre at a whole bunch of things, but these restrictions and punishments were a deliberate design decision, not an unnecessary downside. More experienced players can avoid falling into the pitfalls because they know what type of build they like and they're rewarded for that knowledge. But what about casual gamers that don't know what they like yet? There's a chance you won't like the skills you started off the game increasing, and you may find some skills later on that you do. And in a system where the only way to level up a skill is to use it, it's really tedious to start from square one. You have to go back and farm low level enemies you've already killed a whole bunch of times or spend money on trainers. It may be appealing to just start a build over from scratch if not create an entirely new character. And what about the people who like the flexibility of being able to switch strategies or builds without as much struggle? Many people approach Elder Scrolls as more of an open world action game because that's the closest to the experience with RPGs that they have. If you try that approach in a Morrowind style game, you'll spend a lot of time being a jack of all trades, master of nothing but dying a lot, which isn't fun. My Elder Scrolls 6 would hopefully be a balance between these two systems. It would be a combination of the strengths of Morrowind and Skyrim while trying to fix their weaknesses. It'll require a bit of compromise from either side, but I think that if the game is designed around it, it could be really cool. Let's keep using melee as an example. One-handed and two-handed would carry over from Skyrim as like the weapon styles. We will also add hand-to-hand -hand in that category. However, blade, blunt, axes, and spears would be making a comeback as well. We will categorize weapons with both the systems from Morrowind and the systems from Skyrim, which means that each weapon would be governed by two skills. A one-handed sword would be governed by one-handed and blade. Two-handed swords would be governed by two-handed and blade, and one-handed maces would be governed by one-handed and blunt, and so on. Each weapon would also level up both skills that manage it, so using that one-handed sword would level up one-handed and blade, and so on. I would extend a similar system to other skills where it makes sense, including the archery and magic skills, but we can get into that when we discuss specific skills in later episodes. Basically, almost every action in the game that you take would be governed by two skills. The amount of skills here allows for players to be recognized for their build choices, but it doesn't entirely lock you out of trying something new either. Let's go back to our melee example. When you use one weapon, you are increasing two skills, and each of those skills are half the equation for a few other weapons. Using one-handed swords increases both your one-handed and blade. So if you decide you want to swap to a one-handed mace, you will already have some skill in it. It won't be at the level of your one-handed sword, but it won't be square one either. I feel like this would be a great balance between recognizing players who stick with the playstyle and flexibility for players who want to experiment more or may not know what they want going in. But Skyrim introduced more than just skill changes, it also introduced perks. Each skill in Skyrim had a perk tree with multiple perks, and leveling it up gave you one perk point to spend on one node or leaf on that tree. These perks allowed a degree of specialization in the more generalized skills system, but now that Elder Scrolls has so many skills, how will the perk trees change? Well. Let's get into that. I really like the addition of perks to the Elder Scrolls series. Some of the perks were really fun, and on paper, perks can provide a great sense of progression. But like the skill system, it wasn't perfect. 
I have two big issues with the way perks were implemented in Skyrim. Issues that Bethesda has gone on to improve in other games, and I would want my Elder Scrolls 6 to have those improvements. But for now, let's list the issues. One big issue was the perks themselves. Most of the perks were just linear stat boosts, and since linear stat boosts are already covered by just leveling up the skills, it makes the perks feel a bit redundant. The perks rarely made you approach the game differently. Even failing that, they rarely recognize particular playstyles. Modders have done a good job showing the potential of a perksism for both fun gameplay and role-playing, but so is Bethesda with their Fallout games. In particular, Fallout 4 had a lot of really cool options for Vats players. Things like attacking limbs repeatedly, increasing accuracy, or getting to bank more critical hits to use later, or shooting through walls and armor. These are perks that change the way you look at the game, adding depth and variety while making the player feel smart for building their strategy around them. This feeling is mostly absent in Skyrim, so my perk system for Elder Scrolls 6 will change that. The second and biggest issue for me is that leveling feels too gamey. Elder Scrolls is a series that has been more and more shifting to this action slash immersive sim slash RPG hybrid with you using skills to level up and the NPCs having all these immersive schedules and the Havoc physics engine and the building elements and, and all that good stuff. But their perk system is essentially the same Diablo 2 knockoff that every other RPG uses. A lot of stat boosts and a mostly linear tree that is arbitrarily connected in a separate menu disconnected from the world or anything else you're doing at all. I feel like a more organic and immersive perk system, one more connected to the world, would be a better fit for the Elder Scrolls series and be the change the series needs to stay fresh. So now, let's go into my perk system. One change the game. Nothing with the title of perk should just be a stat boost as those are already covered by skill ups. I'm not against having linear stat boost perks in the game at all. However, I don't think they should be seen as a reward on the same level as a perk. Instead, I would have them automatically unlocked whenever you reach a certain level of a skill. Basically, kind of like how the perks in Oblivion worked. Maybe every five or ten levels, you get something like one of the stat boost perks in Skyrim. Just as an example, maybe after reaching level 30 in Blade, you you could get reduced stamina cost when power attacking or something. So you can still earn these stat unlocks and still have that sense of accomplishment, that sense of progression, but you don't have to spend the point just to get them. The actual perks, however, should all change the way you play the game. Less is more here. Give me less perks, but perks that actually fundamentally change my approach to the game. Some will straight up offer you more tools or moves, like a three hit combo turning into a four hit one that gives some unique effect on the fourth attack. Others will give you these effects for using your tools in certain ways, like a swordsman getting bleed damage for attacking the same part of the body multiple times or something, or attacking multiple times without being hit, and others still will give you bonuses for particular playstyles. Which brings me to my next point. Two cross perks. Skyrim system has trouble recognizing and encouraging unique ways to play. This is what the cross perk system seeks to solve. Cross perks are perks that are a cross between two or more skills. Similarly, the requirements for said perk are a level in two or more skills. Just as an example, maybe there's a dancing blade perk that rewards players for dual wielding blades with a five hit combo or something. It would be powerful, but it would be balanced by requiring, say, level 40 in both one handed and blade. I was also thinking that some of the cross perks would not only require two or more skills, but also other perks. So let's say there's a perk called Shield Parry, and it allows a player to parry an attack with a shield. Well, maybe we have a second rank of that skill called Parry Counter, and this perk allows you to immediately counter attack after a successful parry for increased damage. This would require you to be a certain level in both block and one-handed, but it would also require you to have that original Shield Parry perk as well. These perks could have multiple ranks to purchase, and higher ranks of the perk could require higher levels and additional skills and come with additional bonuses. Multiple cross perks could share a few requirements as well. Shared requirements would form synergies between certain cross perks and encourage players to try new playstyles they may not have otherwise. However, it would also reward sticking with a particular playstyle, meaning not just your level and skills, but also the equipment that you're wielding. So the shield parry perk would, understandably, require users to have a shield and a one-handed weapon equipped to perform the move. And if we take this philosophy a bit further, this could also encourage role-playing. A lot of players will pretend they're a He-Man style barbarian or a kimono-garbed samurai, and while this creativity is cool, 
The Elder Scrolls games never really recognize it. Most, if not all, the role-playing in the more recent titles are effectively headcanons. To an extent, some role-playing being relegated to headcanon is understandable, however, as while creativity is unlimited, developer resources are not. However, having cross-skill perks with specific requirements could recognize role-playing without having to craft an entirely new guild or quest or dialogue choice or whatever. Have a barbarian perk that requires you to level up two-handed in either blade or axe but also requires you to be wearing light armor. Whereas a more Akaviri inspired wandering blade perk could require you to increase in blade and two-handed and to not only be wearing no armor, but robes specifically. And unlike a one-off dialogue choice or quest, these perks would stick with you for the entire playthrough, a constant reminder of the type of character that you're trying to build. Overall, this perk system is a sort of counterbalance to our skill system. Whereas our skill system allows for more flexibility to switch gears mid-playthrough, our perk system encourages role-playing and sticking to specific playstyles. But in order to fully utilize this system, they need to understand it. Which brings me to my next point. 3. UX. So how will the perks be organized? Well, this is my first controversial change to perks. I think we need to get rid of perk trees. That doesn't mean that we won't have a visual representation of the perks that you've unlocked or have yet to unlock, they just won't be connected like a tree. Think more like Fallout 4 than Skyrim. In Skyrim, the perk tree was connected by branches and to get to a perk higher in the tree, you needed to increase in the previous perk below it. The thing is, most of these perks have nothing to do with each other. Like one will give you increased speed and the other will give you increased damage. There's no reason those need to be unlocked in a certain order. In this way, perk trees in Skyrim don't really make as much sense as trees in the series. I'd guess this is a limitation was there to discourage players from using all of their perk points on mainlining one particular skill above all others, but since skill requirements on perks already kind of do that, and again, the perks themselves don't really build on each other, it feels kind of limiting for no reason. I think Fallout 4 had it right, where anything that would make sense as a perk tree could instead be separated by multiple ranks in one perk. And like Fallout 4, the perks that don't are just in a chart of individual perks that that don't really connect to the perks near it. Another reason for doing things this way, however, is that I want the player to avoid having to look at level up screens and menus as much as possible. I want them to feel like an adventurer, not an accountant. I think that number crunching game works well for other RPGs, but Elder Scrolls is all about immersion. And I think having to analyze a tree and see what other perks you need to level up to get access to leveling up another perk and what perks you'll be leveling up in the future just kind of makes this adventure into a numbers game. This is also why we're taking away individual perk trees for each skill. In my ideal Elder Scrolls game, we're going to have a ton of skills to recognize a player's choices. Almost anything you do in the game will have two skills governing it. To have an entire tree for each one of those skills would be an insane amount of menus. Worse yet, the resulting trees would have like a handful of skills in each tree, and a lot of those would probably be a lot of duplicate skills or perks that have nothing but here's the same thing, but it worked with axes instead of swords or whatever. It'd be tedious and useless. Some may point out that this system is now missing the source of progression that comes from leveling up your skills. However, if you remember what I said earlier in the video, each individual skill should have some passive stat bonuses that automatically unlock as you level up. So that's essentially the modern perk tree. It's a perk tree that the player doesn't have to keep up with. So how will this new perk system be organized? Well, instead of having a bunch of smaller perk trees, we'll instead have fewer but larger perk areas. Your perk screen will have three circles, warrior, rogue, and mage. Each will have a set of related perks in the circle. The circles could have colored smoke as a background, the warriors would be red, rogues would be green, and the mages would be blue. So it forms a nice RGB color wheel. So that's how it looks, but let's talk about how it works. The requirements of these perks would depend on which circle they're in. The warrior perks will require skills you typically associate with a warrior, like weapon and armor skills. The rogue perks will require skills associated with a rogue, like thief, archery, alchemy, and speech, and the mage perks will require skills you'd associate with a mage, so all the schools of magic and enchanting. So for example, let's go back to our shield parry perk from before. This perk would be firmly in the warrior circle, as it requires the block skill. The same logic would apply to cross skills within the same group. Let's say you have a cross perk where if you dual wield one-handed blades, you get some kind of special bonus attack or effect. This would be a cross between two skills, one-handed and blade. Since both of these skills are warrior skills, the cross perk would be in the warrior tree. We'll use similar logic with rogue and mage circles as well. So that's the three mage circles. But what about the cross perks, the ones that are across between two different types of skills? What about the perks that don't fit neatly into either circle? Well, that's where you take these three circles 
and make them a Venn diagram. The resulting overlaps would be their own sections that contain their own cross perks. There would be perks that require a combination of skills or perks that you would associate with more than one of our groups. They'll be color coded too, based off of the RGB color wheel. The overlap of warrior and mage, red and blue, would be purple. Warrior and rogue, red and green, would be yellow. And rogue and mage, green and blue, would be cyan. So for example, let's say there's an ability called battle mage that lets you infuse your one-handed weapon with the power of a spell in your offhand. It would require both magic and warrior skills and would go into the purple section between them. An ability called hidden magic that lets mages do sneak attacks would require both rogue and mage skills and would go into the cyan section between them. And a perk that gives you a chance to instantly kill someone with a stink attack if you have a one-handed blade would require both rogue and warrior skills and would go into the yellow section between them. And as far as how the perk system is organized, that's basically it. It'll work very similarly to Fallout 4, where when you level up, if you have the level requirements, you can just get the perks that you want. However, there's one more wrinkle in the cross perk system. One that's probably going to be the most controversial idea in the entire video. 4. Make earning perks immersive. The coolest moments I had while playing Skyrim are when I found the Wall of Power or a Spellbook. It feels like the skill is as much a part of the world as I am. It plays into the fantasy that I'm this adventurer learning skills to overcome challenges to get powerful in this hostile world. I feel like the Elder Scrolls series would benefit from more of this style of progression. This is one of the choices I'll feel I'll get the most pushback on, but I think it's too cool not to at least consider. Make every perk be a skill you have to learn by reading a tangible book or a scroll. Basically, make skills function like spells, or even weapons and armor. Basically make them function like an actual item. And like any other item, you can buy them, earn them, steal them, or find them. Here's the counterbalance to make things easier. No perk points. Once you find the perk, if you have the required stats to use it, you can now use that perk. Now I know that sounds drastic, but let me justify the changes for a bit. First off, I don't want every single one of these perks to be some hidden collectible like bobbleheads were or skill books or whatever. In fact, I think the system works best if there are ways a player can get perks that aren't just finding them. In particular, I want the lower level perks to be learned in multiple very obvious ways so that players don't risk missing things core to their build. Rarer or higher level perks would be harder to find or earn, and even then we can have assists to players who are willing to do a quest or pay some money. But more on that later. Why change the perk system to be like this? Well, there are a few reasons, but the biggest one is that it solves one of my biggest problems with RPGs. Most quest rewards are boring. In most RPGs, including Elder Scrolls, nearly all quest rewards are finite except XP and money. That unique item? It may be cool if you're roleplaying, but you'll likely find an objectively better piece of equipment a few levels later. Even gold can lose its value toward the end of the game as you get closer and closer to finishing your build and thus have nothing to spend your money on. So really, XP is the only reward that is consistently valuable, meaning guild halls, quest givers, enemies, dungeons, they may be fun to do for their own sake, but as far as what they give you, their reason to exist outside of more content is only as good as whether their quests give you enough XP to level up and grow in power on your own. My goal here is to get my parry skill, but to do that I need to level up, and this guy will give me XP if I do a quest for him. In this way, having rewards and level ups run in XP means that each NPC has a mathematical value. How much XP am I getting per hour of play? Is this guy's horse really worth my time? It turns this living, breathing world into a math equation, and all of the world building in the world can't overcome my lizard brain's desire to be mathematically the best. It creates this almost resentful and adversarial relationship between the player and the world. I don't really need this NPC to get the skill, I just need his reward so that I can do it myself. Like, oh yeah, it's this schmuck, yeah, I may as well help him, I need the XP. And that's assuming it's worth helping him at all. However, one series found a solution to this problem, and thankfully, it's one Bethesda developers are familiar with the newer Fallout games. In those games, not all quest rewards are just money or XP. Some of them are perks. Like in Fallout 3, in the Wasteland Survival Guide quest that tests the effects of radiation, if you collect 600 rads, you get a perk that regenerates crippled limbs when you experience advanced radiation. This perk is pretty situational, so a cautious player may not have picked it as a perk with their limited stash of perk points. But a perk they just happened to get while playing? Now it's a cool reward. Maybe it could lead to a build that someone tries, where they have tons of endurance 
damage and strength constantly gets themselves irradiated and with a few other perks become this unstoppable radiation machine. And now it's led to role playing, all while encouraging players to engage with the quests the developers spent so much time on. This didn't require developers to do any more work than they were already doing. It just required the developers to make the difficult decision to hold back some of the cool stuff they made so players can feel good about earning it later on. Earning powers gives a particular sense of progression that you don't really get from a cluster of XP. The perk becomes more than just a cool bonus for your character. It becomes a reason to roleplay, a marker of your progress, a reminder of an adventure you've been on, an encouragement to adventure more. It does all of this while also tying the skill to something in the actual game world, making it more immersive. And this isn't the only way power is tied to the world in Bethesda's Fallout. There are skill magazines and bobbleheads scattered throughout the wasteland, especially in Fallout 4. Finding power in the world means you're always having a random chance at a sense of progression even outside of leveling up, which not only makes exploration more rewarding for all players, but makes randomly wandering the wasteland just as effective as doing quests. And again, it's immersive to find a skill in the world and allows players to get that skill themselves right away. Both of these share one big positive. They both offer permanent boosts in power that are useful to all characters no matter how far into the game you are. They make the locations and quests associated with them feel more meaningful. They make the world and your progress feel more natural and satisfying and they solve one of the biggest issues I have with RPGs. I think if a game was designed from the ground up to have all perks function in this way, then I think it would make for a really immersive game. And that's why I like having perks be earnable in the world. It gives that sense of immediacy to perks in the same way that you have that sense of immediacy with increasing a skill. When you increase a skill, you get that skill right away. When you increase one handed to level 50, it's level 50 now. You don't have to be at a level up screen putting points into it. You now are stronger with your sword. Imagine if a perk worked the same way, where one once you got that perk, you immediately had it. No level up screen. You now have this power. Go use it. I feel like this sense of immersion, the sense of immediacy, would be really, really cool and fit the design ethos of the Elder Scrolls series really, really well. Now, many will argue that while Fallout and to a lesser extent Elder Scrolls have been doing this, it was never done for all the perks. In fact, I made a concession in my original video where I had only some of the perks being findable and the rest of them being earnable the traditional way. However, we've recently seen a game pull off all of its perks being in the world, findable and not earnable, and be massively successful with a title called Elden Ring. In that game, leveling up only comes in the form of stats, and the game's equivalent of perks, its weapon arts and spells, are all found in the world, purchased or achieved by completing quests or bosses. Elden Ring system is taking Bethesda's system and running with it. The thing is, it did it in a FromSoft game, which are intentionally hands-off and obtuse. I think that taking the rewarding aspects of this system, but with the accessibility and guidance of a typical Bethesda game, could result in a really rewarding sense of progression. So what would that look like? Well, like I said earlier, players can buy them, earn them, steal them, or find them. Let's go in that order. Many perk books could be available to purchase at stores. Lower level perks would be available in more common shops or from general trainers. And from a world building perspective, it makes sense that there would be some cheap beginner level guides for the average ordinary citizen who needs to learn just enough to live their life or protect themselves. Higher level perk books, on the other hand, would be more expensive to reflect the expertise required to write it. But where would all these books come from? Well, from the guilds. This fixes something with guilds and Skyrim into a lesser extent Oblivion that's always bothered me for a while, and it's a reason I don't really see mentioned. The guilds in these games don't really behave like guilds. They're more like themed mercenary groups. They give you a job to do, and the only thing they offer you is XP, gold, and occasionally some loot. Loot that's usually outdated in five levels. They don't really teach you anything. As far as your actual skill is concerned, you're already at or above the guild's level just by joining it, and they don't really train your skills further. There are trainers, but it's not like they're training you on things you couldn't just learn yourself. They also don't really impact the world they inhabit at all. They don't produce anything, they don't have an in-universe money flow, and they don't really impact the world they inhabit at all. They don't even have a reason to exist outside of training 20 people every 100 years. I know that in games, some level of abstraction is required, like how a village in a game is represented by 20 homes or something, but the actual function of 
of the guilds in the Elder Scrolls games are so abstracted that they don't even really feel like guilds anymore. All this removes a lot of the appeal of the power fantasy of being inducted into this prestigious institution where you learn and find like-minded peers and grow your knowledge and make your mark on the world and all that stuff. So in our Elder Scrolls, perk books come from the people that would teach the material, guilds and masters. The lower level books and shops could be information the guild sells to local merchants. The rarest books, however, would be under the sole possession of either a guild or an individual master. To get these legitimately, you have to engage in the second way to get these perks earning a lesson from the perk book's owner. Some would be willing to sell the knowledge at a premium, but others would need you to prove yourself worthy, either through quests or some other demonstration of your raw skill. Some should be restricted to players who reach a certain rank in the guild, because it makes sense for guilds to incentivize devotion in that way and not give out their secrets willy-nilly. Maybe some quests could reward you by training some of your skills up, but every few quests you'd get a perk book, and all of these would make the guilds actually behave like guilds, teaching you new skills you wouldn't be able to learn anywhere else if you dedicate yourself to their organization. They have a reason to exist outside of more content for the player and other NPCs would have reasons to join them. They would feel like an actual institutional force you have to contend with to make your way in the world. You could say similar things about individual experts. Imagine finding a wandering Argonian samurai in the wild who teaches you some technique they learned in their travels in Akavir and maybe this leads to a quest where you help them save the village he's currently camping near. You feel like an actual apprentice if you got more than gold for helping a powerful master. You could have other quest lines that reward players with perks as well. Figuring out where to find the quest to get the player's perks could be something done through the rumor system already in the Elder Scrolls series, or, of course, the players could stumble upon it naturally, leading to unexpected rewards that feel immersive in a way that a level up screen never could. With the world behaving like an actual world, the part of my brain that wants to get more powerful will be forced to treat the game in a more immersive way. An immersion is a big part of the appeal of the Elder Scrolls series. Of course, you could also get any of these books through more illegitimate means. But the rarer the book, the harder it'll be to steal. And that makes sense. The rich and powerful will sell some of their knowledge to the common folk, but would save the best for themselves. We could even connect us to the Thieves' Guild. Maybe some of their quests require the player to steal certain rare books to copy and distribute to the masses free of charge. The Thieves' Guild stealing from other guilds could be reacted to in the world. Maybe it leads to some antagonism between guilds, which I feel was missing a bit in the last two mainline Elder Scrolls titles. It would restore the Thieves Guild to the Robin Hoods they were in Oblivion instead of the sewer mobsters they were in Skyrim. So these gameplay changes could even enhance the story. And the quest doesn't have to be theoretical either. Once you do these quests and steal these books, you could actually see copies of the perk book making the rounds in poorer marketplaces and seeing more NPCs actually use the perk while fighting, both friend and foe. This is something Bethesda does with a lot of their quests anyway, but now they can apply that same talent to perks. That's the beauty of making perks these physical objects in the world. It leads to all these organic, immersive scenarios. And speaking of organic, there's one more way the player can find these perks finding them. Books that can be bought at common stores can also be found on adventurers outside of town or on bandits that stop the adventurer early. They can be found on some random chests, abandoned camps, at the bottom of waterfalls, and other places someone can lose a book. But these are the books the civilized world knows about. Tons of knowledge is lost to history, especially during times of war. So naturally, some books will be hidden in lost tombs and dungeons, and can be found by a keen eye in an explorer. However, to avoid the risk of players missing perks that could be core to their build, there can be ways that they can figure out the location without randomly stumbling upon them. I was thinking we could have some ancient maps that the players can buy that reveals their location, even if it's like a general area, kind of just circled on a map and the player still has to kind of look a little bit to find it. We could even link this back to the world again. Maybe some maps can be bought from more high-end merchants, but other maps are only available from guild halls. Maybe you can get the maps as rewards, or on the flip side, maybe they give you the map and the quest is to retrieve the perk book for the guild. And if you've already gotten the perk, you get the quest rewards automatically once you join the guild. Maybe there could be an entire explorer's guild whose mission is to recover artifacts in nearby monster infested ruins before they're lost to history, and these people could sell you maps to track perks as a radiant quest. Even then, with the amount of perks out there, most players will randomly stumble on at least a few perks, and that would make exploring feel that much more meaningful. The world wouldn't just be a place to conquer, it has things to teach you. The more hidden perks you find would feel like this lost knowledge being unearthed, or forbidden knowledge being unearthed unleashed. Some of the rarer books in the wild would be knowledge that only you would know, playing even more into the power fantasy of this series in a way that doesn't break immersion. These perk books can be an important location 
dungeons, dusty tombs, at the end of dungeons, or in the clutches of monsters. Imagine having to grab a perk book from the tomb of an ancient skeleton necromancer, only for this action to wake them from their slumber and start a boss fight. A boss that uses the perk against you during the fight. Some of you may see this perk system as a risky play, but I really don't think so. Again, Elden Ring is a massive success and it's way more restrictive and far less handholdy than my system is. But it's more than that. I don't think that Bethesda's fanbase are in the business of avoiding content. Most of their fans are either casual and probably wouldn't care if they missed a perk or two, are role players who would appreciate the immersion, or are completionists who appreciate having to work for their completions. I don't see this idea leaving many people out, especially if you provide ways to get around it. But what this would add to a game like Elder Scrolls is irreplaceable. You'd have rewards for your efforts that are more permanent than loot or more exciting than XP, rewards that'll always be useful in a way that makes more sense in universe, making the player that much more attached to all the towns and tombs they visit. Exploration would be more meaningful as any random tomb could have a surprise boost in power, an ancient piece of knowledge that gives you an advantage over your enemies. But buying maps of these locations would still allow players who like to plan out their builds to consciously see seek out specific perks, as well as give them something useful to spend their excess money on, all while making players feel like an explorer or a treasure hunter in the process. Overall, a system like this would create a huge drive to explore the world and make mastering even basic skills that much more satisfying. It would naturally play into the type of power fantasy the more recent Elder Scrolls games are trying to offer, and it would do all of this in a way that enhances world building and immersion. If you force players to engage with your world, they get to experience the best parts of your game, holding even a little bit of your content back could go a really long way. Either way, I think my ideas for these perks, both in the perks themselves and how you unlock them, could be huge for the series. And that's it for skills and perks, at least a general overview. We'll have individual episodes on what the actual perks are, how they relate to the skills and stuff like that, but that's not going to come for a while. I want to try to push this out as soon as possible, as a lot of these ideas are already written in that big Google Doc I talked about. They just need to be, you know, turned into a script, so stay tuned. And if you want to see more of this, be sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified of my new videos, and share it around the people who you think would be interested. Next episode will be about attributes, and leveling. And if you thought that this episode was controversial, oh boy. See you next time.